Hello, welcome to episode 54 of the Screen Age Podcast, brought to you by the fraying ends of my sanity because of college work. So, I am your host, Connor. <laughs> and I'm Rodrigo, which I, I still have my phrase. Um. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you still have your sanity. My sanity is fraying yeah. at the ends. Oh. <laughs> Tough week. Tough week. Nothing gives me like a straight answer, and even when they think they do, it's just like do this, but also this. I'm like those are not mutually exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yes, but there are some good things throughout this week that I want to focus on, uh, which yeah. will come later. But for a moment, let's go with TV because I have some other things I want to mention in the movies and games. Okay, good because we didn't discuss this beforehand, which no, we were going to go for. <laughs> I completely forgot. Um, yeah, do you want to go first? Sure, there's a Halo TV series again. Ah, you took me. <laughs> I knew it was. <laughs> the funny thing about that is I literally just saw it there again. I know it's a little <sighs> over five days ago. We usually don't go that far back, but I feel like it's something we haven't mentioned. Yeah, this is a uh, a show that has... It's been in the works for a while, I'm pretty sure, but... Yeah. My That's God, there's been right so many TV. Act. There's actually been a deceptively large amount of Halo shows. And oh, like, only like Red vs. Blue was good. Yeah, realistically, and even then, that was good up until season ten. They're still going, I think. They've like rejigged it. I know. Oh my I, God. I, like season ten was good. Eleven was pretty. Good. I like it was decent up to like thirteen, and I was like, cool, this is all there. And then it just kind of kept going, and I was like, I stopped watching this. But, uh, yeah, like, we looked through all the different Halo shows. Um, so I'll have a look here now, just to get a proper list. Halo show list. Whoops, that's not the show. Um, Halo TV series, fuck it. It does. Not sh- oh, yeah, here we kind of there's Halo movies as well Legends is wait what <laughs> the wait, short yeah. movies yeah, <laughs> anyway. yeah with, with this uh, with this new one they, we got a teaser like just mm. a quick 30 second teaser thing um, I, yeah that was it they literally just showed uh, Master Chief and that's it like they, they didn't really do anything which I have to question. <laughs> what, what do you have to question? Why do we have to focus on him for the TV show or even a movie or something? We literally have some of the most cinematic and dramatic games that you can play or even just watch plays of or even just watch the fucking cutscenes of, really, because they're equally as yeah. good, of him absolutely being a badass. So... And just so many, like, it also, it really comes, like, that he's the only interesting Spartan. There isn't. And is he a Mark Gen... Oh, Gen, is he? Gen fucking 2? What? I should know off the top of my head. I'm really just... What generation Spartan? Not Chief. Gen 2! I was right! Ha! <laughs> Fanboy. <laughs> and there's so many, like, you could absolutely make an entire thing of other gen 2 spartans or just an entire other fire team it doesn't just have to be him like even yeah. halo reach had all the customized that's why i love my halo reach and odst they focus on the other things than ju- like i love halo reach because it's an entirely customizable and like personal spartan fire team that you follow <clears throat> you get attached with and then lose um <laughs> and halo odst is you're following odsts and i even fucking spartans and you're like oh god so you're, like it's so good but the fact that they're still focusing on this gen 2 spartan still after all this time after i don't know if there's anything else that we can explore with the man i'm like do we really yeah. need, do we really need this yeah like there is so much in halo that you can literally like do whatever and it, and it kind of reminds me of like um it's called them um, Spider, uh, not Spider Man, fuck's sake, uh, Star Wars, with just keep using the same set of characters, the same mm. storyline, the same thing over and over, and it just gets repetitive and old. And then when they go, like, look at this guy, it's called the Mandalorian, mm-hmm. it's like, oh my god, this is like the greatest thing since sliced bread. So you could do that with Halo, you could be like, oh, look at these, like, 
obscure guys that you've never even heard of unless you read like the graphic novels or mm. whatever and then it's like now we follow their story that you've never seen anything like that before yeah instead of going hey look the same guy we've been looking over yes we all love Master Chief yes mm. he's awesome but we're getting him in games constantly and other mm. things have been done we don't need more yeah like even and you don't even necessarily have to like have a special armor for him either like you could have another gen 2 just different like look at Halo Wars we got red team and blue team mm. <clears throat> and they were fucking awesome you saw some of the cutscenes yeah. they were one of the badasseries I've ever seen <laughs> And yeah, in yeah. Halo 2, I think it's still Red Team, I'm not 100% sure. Some of those cutscenes are badass, and you really feel for those Spartans. So it's like, you don't even have to change the armor, because if you want to keep the armor to be able to be like, oh yeah, I know, I think my fucking mic is blowing out. Um, <laughs> you don't even have to change the armor that much if you want to keep like that visual representation of, oh yeah, I know that character, I know that special thing, like, I recognize that from Halo. So if you want to have a Gen 2 that goes, oh yeah, Halo to you, have a Gen 2. Yeah. Just don't have John 117. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 yeah. And I, yeah, that's, that's all really we can say. And and it's coming to Paramount Plus, which... What's I the mean, point? <laughs> what's the point? Because half the world doesn't have... Well, all of the world doesn't have it. Only one country has Paramount Plus. Mm. Um, so... And Paramount Plus as well. It's, I don't know. It's, it's a bit weird to go there. Like, um, but look, what can we do? You know, mm. it, this was announced in two thousand eighteen, and it 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 obviously got delayed and everything. Oh yeah, um, I think at one point uh, Peter Jackson was attached to one of these series. Yeah, and and like it still doesn't have a set release date. It's just like next year. Yeah. You know, like they haven't really said anything still like other things were delayed as well but this is just taking way too long yeah like this is a reason what's the point what's the yeah, point of having it, this yeah they were probably just like keep kicking the can down the line till we have to like come to it we'll, we'll deal with the mo more important ones the more money maker ones because other things were announced later and produced and already released like iCarly was is Paramount Plus and that mm -hmm. was announced after produced and released the first full season before we even like got a teaser for the fucking Halo so it's just kind of like everyone knows it's like why are we doing this <laughs> pause so. for a second but yeah uh, do you do you have anything else yeah actually I do there's um there was a pitch for the people who make Castlevania, the um, anime show, which I love so much, and I still every now and again push for you to watch because it's so fucking good. <laughs> but um, they, their studio has a pitch for when Captain America, Captain America, <laughs> Captain okay. America fights Nazis in World War Two, which. Okay. Did kind of prompt me a bit to go, I would actually be okay with seeing that because every time you look at Captain America, you're like, cool. Um, modern day, old, like they always yeah. talk about how old he is and he's in the current day type of thing, he's super soldier then. But like the a coolest. A man out of time. Yeah, it's a man out of time. But the coolest part about, sorry, well, definitely, certainly, certainly the coolest part of the first um, Captain America and the whole, like, what you call it? Advertising campaign for it as well was him taking on missions in World War Two and like fighting mm. against them and stuff like that. Like the scene where he like breaks down the door and he has the pistol out type of thing. Firstly, it's weird seeing Captain America with a pistol, but that's the first movie that we got. Yeah. Uh, so he doesn't even necessarily have to use the pistol. He can still just be hand to hand because he's a super soldier. But like we all like in the first one, we got brief glimpses of like some of the missions that he goes on and some of the other things that he does um, and I just kind of want to see like I wouldn't mind seeing that I wouldn't mind seeing why he became so like just like what the things that made him 
him like the reason why he has such a name yeah. even back then because okay he's a super soldier but just because he's a super soldier doesn't mean you're instantly famous as much as he was back then he was a war hero back then yeah he was like super well known like it, it wasn't just a thing that like he, he became like the super soldier and then he was frozen in ice like mm. the next week he he was there for a while mm. you know for a good while so yeah that that's actually would be interesting because we've never seen that um yeah, the most that we've gotten yeah. again was the first movie, and I mean, like we get a few things of them like kicking down again, kicking down the door to like a weapons manufacturer or some shit like that. Like, I'd love to see some things like that, because yeah. you can always do crazy things with Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. How yeah, many yeah. shows or movies start off with like Nazis, um, uh, mad scientists? How many start with that? Add another one. We love them. Yeah, yeah. So like, and it also be interesting, like. Was there ever anything that kind of pushed him? Mm. Like, just, like, ever made him kind of go edging towards the, like, I could kill you if you don't stop kind of a thing. Or Uh, did he? Because, like, do they ever explicitly... Yeah, yeah, because they never explicitly say that he doesn't kill people. And, I mean, you look at some of the things he did in in Civil War, some of those men don't get out (laughs) of there. Oh, definitely, yeah. And... that's one of the things I, I um, like when people always say, oh, like Captain America is like, he's like the pinnacle of like good. He doesn't kill and all this. So like when they gave him a gun in one of the films, it's like, oh, that's not him. It's like, but it was like, if you look back when he was in World War Two, mm-hmm. <laughs> he had he had a pistol and he had mm-hmm. guns and he was shooting. So he most definitely has killed people because you oh, don't yeah. use a gun and shoot at people not to kill you know, especially in fucking war, like, so, yeah, the, it's always kind of been, like, a thing that we just assume he doesn't mm. kill, we just assume he's, like, the perfect good guy, but he most definitely is not the oh, perfect yeah. good guy. <laughs> I, I, that's something, I, like, I'd like to see, and see them, what way they could write that, because I would just be interested to be, like, because as soon as you see him kill someone, someone's going to be like, oh, Captain America doesn't kill, and the instant next response is going to be, where does he say that? Where yeah, does he say, where, I don't kill? Where, exactly, yeah. Like, if it was Batman and Batman kills, then you're like, okay. Because that's his whole thing, that he doesn't kill. Mm-hmm. But Captain America is is not that, you know? I'm sure there's somewhere in some comic book where he says, I don't like to kill. But he's thrown a thin metal sheet at someone so hard it bounces <laughs> off them that's gonna rupture a few arteries yeah i've never understood that no. i feel like that's a different topic because i'm always like how could he throw this thing and it gets lodged halfway through a, a, a full concrete wall <laughs> but it bounces off the forehead off a, of a fucking nazi that would decapitate you oh yeah like so and it was like oh no he he knows how to throw it and no, he fucking doesn't. He oh. because sometimes he throws it at someone, and this someone dodges it, and it's lodged into the wall. Yeah. So, sh- like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I feel like they did a this... little bit of a better job at not showing it stick into like concrete things and stuff like that in the Marvel universe. They did a bit of a better job at making it look like it bounces off walls. But again, that noise. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that that thing would would destroy anyone. <laughs> I don't know, but I, that's always something I've looked at and gone. Mm. I kind of wish this was like or rated because yeah. we could see people be split in half. <laughs> Thanks and to that's Corridor Digital, you can. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, if you think Cap doesn't kill, you're wrong. He does. Uh, yeah, I've, we just don't I've, see it. We just don't see it, and like that's a real interesting way how he's written because he's written as the Golden Boy. And yeah. so, like, you instantly think, oh, yeah, he shouldn't kill, or he doesn't kill. And But it's like, it's you telling yourself that. Because even when I say yeah. it, I'm like, I, I say, oh, he doesn't kill. I was like, no, I'm telling myself that he doesn't kill people. Yeah. And it's weird that we've painted him as the good guy and the, the golden boy. Especially in, like, Civil War, when he's the one going against the government and going against, like, what is supposed to be done. Mm-hmm. So if anyone's like the, the good boy, the golden boy is Iron Man, not, not Cap. Yeah, and even Iron Man hunted terrorists, <laughs> <laughs> and he sold fucking weapons to them. Mm-hmm. So, 
<laughs> so no one's good. Uh, yeah, maybe there's no such thing as a true good hero. <laughs> I was gonna say Hulk, but then I remembered it's Hulk, so <laughs> Yeah. Um, Literal yeah, embodiment no, of rage. There's no good maybe Ant Man. But he no he started. No, he was a criminal. Yeah. Yeah. No, no one's good in that. Spider Man. No. Spider Man. Okay. Spider Man. Spider Man's the only one. Well we'll say um, Peter Parker because there's a few other ones that are evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But uh, yeah. He's the only one. Thank God yeah. we got to one because imagine if a young kid watched that, like listen to us saying that, and we're like, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, all the superheroes are bad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a talk about DC, okay? Oh god, yeah, we didn't even bring up Scarlet Witch and fucking. Oh, well, Scarlet those, like... Witch is a villain at one point. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, she also took a whole fucking uh, city under her siege. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and that's that's in the good set. That's that's the good. Witch. <laughs> that, that's when she was the good witch. Yeah, yeah. But fuck me. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a revelation yeah. we've kind of hit with at the moment. That I'm a bit. Oh yeah. damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I've started watching uh something that just dropped on Netflix. It it called Young Sheldon. You've obviously heard of. Of young Sheldon. Oh, I, I guess it just got released onto it, has it? Oh, onto Netflix, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been out for five seasons. Oh. Now, but they've only put three on Netflix. Wow. Um, I know. Uh, it's actually it's actually quite good. Now, I was watching it and I was like, it's good because I enjoyed Big Bang Theory and I know and I understand what Sheldon is and this and that and I'm interested to see why, where he grew up and why he, like, his mother is the way she is, her sister, the brother, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's interesting in that sense, but if someone that has never watched The Big Bang Theory or has no interest in Big Bang Theory watches Young Sheldon, that shows ass. <laughs> <laughs> that shows ass. In fairness, like, it's good because I know what's going on. Anyone else is just like, yeah, this is shit. <laughs> God, that's a very honest reaction to that, in fairness. Yeah, like I, I, I really enjoy it and I'm loving it. Uh, but I, I, I would understand totally why someone wouldn't like it, especially if you didn't like Big Bang Theory or haven't watched Big Bang Theory. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, I just, I just wanted to bring that up because I saw something there about it. Now, yeah, when well, we're talking about TV mo- uh, series that we've been um, exposed to, I, my roommates were watching Pretty Little Liars last night. I haven't ever oh seen boy. a show that I would like <laughs> not many shows make me go god I want to avoid that but I it was one of the worst things I've ever laid ears upon oh if if you don't want to watch it look up who A is and let them know you just ruined the whole show <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how far in they are but I might <laughs> uh, no, they don't tell who A is till like season 9 or something just <laughs> just because I want to know it's a load of bollocks like uh, Brilliant Lawyers was um, something that was like massive and was actually like call quite it. enjoy enjoyed by fans you called it? yeah did not take <laughs> yeah. that long you look at it for 30 seconds and go oh that's probably them yeah um, like it was something that was like really well received and was doing really well and then when they like told people who A was everyone was like Really? Really? And then it went for on for like two more seasons after them saying who A was because the whole thing is like they want to find out who A is oh, and then it goes season. on after... Oh, boy. Yeah, but that's a garbage, garbage show. <laughs> how, how does this have such high ratings? Uh, that's what I'm telling you. It was good up until the point they say who A is and then it's just oh. garbage from then on out. But um, yeah, do you wanna move on? <laughs> no, no, I I still have things. <laughs> oh, you have things. Okay, okay. Yeah, that that was just since you brought up that. Um, where was it? We okay. I might as well bring this into oh, games yeah, then. So, I see that there is some form of plan or thought or something. Once I find it again in a moment <laughs> because I scrolled really far up away from everything because I'm that smart um, there 
is a live action show of a video game. Okay. Now, instantly, we're like, mm -hmm. which one? <laughs> Hunt Showdown. Okay. So, for those who don't know what it is, and in fairness, it's a pretty like kind of cult followed game. Um, yeah. Even though it says popular, it's not really. Um, excuse me. Hunt Showdown is pretty much like a bounty hunting game where you and a group of your friends, like I think it's three, will go with it like against three or four other teams of three to try yeah. and track down this big monster and once you find the monster you kill it and then you have to get the uh, the trophy that it drops to extraction point and then that's how you win you kill the other teams or your last person standing then you kill the monster and go that's how you win but that's okay. the whole game the whole game is just that there isn't a campaign there isn't a story there isn't lore behind a lot of the things that I know of okay. anyway it's just like that's the mechanics of it it's a bounty hunting okay. monster game okay okay and now there's a live action show coming out about it. Now I'm not gonna say what my opinion is on it just yet. I'm gonna see what just hearing what I said, what do you think? I don't think it would work because there's no story to it. And that is the exact reason why I think it will work. <laughs> Who do you disappoint? Like, that's true, that's true actually, yeah, yeah. Like you don't have to stick to anything, you could be original. Exactly. Yeah. Like, who who in re in reality who will you disappoint going into it? You can't re really disappoint the game character uh, fans because if you show the monsters that are cool in the game in in the series, then that like they're instantly going to be like, oh yeah, the things from the games that we hunt there, that's awesome. If you yeah. like write the characters well enough, they like no one will care because they're not. There's no other characters in it. It's themselves. So yeah, that, that's why I want to bring up this shit like. Of all the, the things that people are making nowadays, um, like even like the Resident Evil movie, or is it? Is that a, yeah, it's a movie. Um, it is a movie, yeah. Yeah, so I'll come on to that later. Um, or depending how this is edited, because I might have fucked up a bit. We already discussed it. <laughs> but like, if we look at those ones, um, we had that, and then we have obviously the Uncharted movie and a few other video game series, like The Witcher. We we'll also say that. Those three mm. things that I mentioned there, you can disappoint a lot of people because those you characters could, yeah. have their story. And those characters are like, oh yeah, this is set and written. If you don't follow this, you're going to be in a bit of trouble. So when I saw this, I instantly was like, show, wait a minute, showdown. There aren't characters. There's no backstory. There's no like deep lore that people have to follow by. There's so to much like creative. Super original. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much creative freedom with this. Yeah. Which yeah, when you put it me. like that, yeah. Yeah, which then prompted me. There are plenty of games that are actually full multiplayer games that could, in theory, have a good back, like good stories that you could like call the series that the name of this multiplayer game you want, and then create a completely original thing, just showing the video game, like a few references to video game yeah. things, but being really original. This is what we what we kind of called. Um, for in the um, what you call it, the Uncharted thing of not relying mm. too heavily on it, and by the looks of the Resident Evil show or movie, sorry, it looks like they really are. And again, we might discuss that already, but um, <laughs> so a show like this, I'm like, I would be okay with that. I would be very okay. I, I love watching um, show or. Show um fuck what's it called haunt showdown. I love watching that type of stuff because like the monsters look cool and terrifying, and it's yeah. kind of mindless. So if they could expand on something like that, just add some story into it. But like with a a TV series that you don't even have to watch if you don't want, you can just keep playing the mindless game. That's really yeah. interesting. But then that prompted me again of what other games that are just multiplayer could there realistically be a story in Warzone. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, because uh, yeah, Battlefield did come to mind of because while I was playing it, we'll discuss this in a few minutes. There is an overarching war going on in the background, but there's not necessarily just yet. I haven't really played much more of it. Of there is necessarily this big focus on the story behind the war, but there's a load yeah. of characters. 
And I know the character yeah. probably had their own smaller backstory, but you could implement a story overarching that because we've seen Battlefield um, stories in the past and we've played them and we loved them. So, they, like, Battlefield mm. make good stories. So, you could make a nice action series for that, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was a little yeah. bit more of a push because the characters are a bit more developed and you can't really have Irish in anymore because sadly the actor passed away and his story kind of ends in four but there are so many other characters that you could develop and create almost like a my hero-esque thing in live action for this war against the US and the Russians yeah yeah definitely that's an yeah that, that could be a good one mm. um, because e- each map kind of has its own story as well yeah in a way that there's like the, the like the Russians are holding this place and like the Americans are trying to like take over or whatever. You could even do that type of a thing, just yeah, just and explore all the maps and just do shit like that. Like like if you do the Battlefield Four one with the Shanghai Tower, you could mm. easily have something like where you have to go up to the top and then it's like you have to get something and then it fucking collapses and you gotta parachute off and shit like that like yeah that that, that could be a good one actually yeah yeah because like it's the main thing that we always or at least yeah no it's the main thing that we always discuss when we talk about battlefield is each time we play a map we always have these massive cinematic experiences within the yeah. game that it's just like fuck like even last night i played for a little bit i'll discuss a little bit later on um but one map at one point we were just going for a subjective and for some reason, my entire team was just like mind melded into let's get this objective, <laughs> and we fucking yeah. surrounded it. And like tanks came over it, um, like a hill, and started pounding one side of it. And then me and another like two squads, like <laughs> were like literally, like, this is I'm really not making up. I wish I was recording it. We like hiked across the side, like the, like a, a rocky scape, just to like get another sniping advantage on as like other foot soldiers and vehicles pushed in from the north and we fucking floored yeah. it and we're like this is awesome <laughs> and like that was a really good experience that I had in that but the reason why it was is because it was so cinematic yeah. if you had your own story as you said and you know, like its own story per map like like the um, what Battlefield 5 did for the stories the yeah. hero story the yeah, war yeah. stories but even just do for a live action show that would be awesome I, I yeah. would be so okay with that yeah you could easily have because there's so many maps and so many Mm. things that you can really just like you could do like let's say there's currently what four no there's six main battlefield games now yeah a bit more actually yeah yeah so like you could do six seasons uh, Mm. and just have each season is one game per se and then you just explore each map it doesn't necessarily have to follow one character or follow one storyline yeah. each episode could be its own thing and have like hour long episodes and just do it like that and that would be kind of awesome yeah like I know we go back to like you, you probably want to leave Bad Company out of it because they are their own golden little just tribe themselves of just <laughs> awesomeness um and like yeah, like you you have bad company. I said bad company in like just there. Yeah. Um, you have like bad people three and four, which have really good stories. And four would be difficult to do because it has like three endings to it as well. So yeah. it'd be like ah, you have to choose the one people. Which I one you have to pick? Yeah. Yeah, I even think three had multiple endings. But even just focusing on maps, just like like I know I just said bad people four, but I would love some form of like. God, even if a YouTube company wanted to just machine made a bunch of things like this. Yeah. Of just stories of um, each map or something like that. That would be, like, brilliant. But even just for... Even if you just focus on 2042 and the characters that they have made for that, I'd love that. I would actually love like, yeah. a series where it's, like, one, this is, like, a, a Russian guy having to defend against the Americans taking over an area, or mm. this is the French person who has to stop, um, like, another... I don't, know, I can't, don't know if the Chinese are in it at this point. I can't remember if it's the entire coalition or just the Russians. But yeah, like that's what prompted my mind. It was like, that would actually make for a good series of just different characters. Because even... Yeah. It's what I just said about... Um, we were talking about the Halo show. Like, you can just have elements of the game but go completely original with it. You don't have to have, exactly, as you said, yeah. John. So yeah. 
Yeah, like you, you'll have obviously the covenant and like they, they yeah. look like the game, and you'll have the flood and and stuff like that. Obviously, all reminiscent to the game, mm-hmm. but you can have your own storyline at the end of the day. It's gonna be a real video game heavy episode actually, because even movies we have to or have already discussed or discussed um, video game stuff. So yeah, yeah, uh, video games, <laughs> video games, yeah. Yeah, we'll, as we'll, I, stick ba- we'll, we'll stick with Battlefield. Yeah, like. as we alluded to, I play Battlefield 2042 because of the, um, what you call it, 10 hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> or, um, <laughs> I need to word. I don't. This is one of the interesting things of I don't have to word my words to um, save the audience or anything like that. I have to do it to like just kind of save myself from <clears throat> you. Um, <laughs> Like, okay, I played it last night for I th- I'm probably about 45 minutes now. I played two matches, won both, had some fun okay. times in it. Um, as I said, again, that entire section happened where we yeah. pushed onto this, and I was like, damn, this is unreal. But the maps are huge. <laughs> and I mean, huge. <laughs> Ever so slightly, where if you don't have a vehicle, which are not that easy to drive, and that's me saying it, I'm usually our getaway driver in games. Um, yeah. They are not the greatest, but that might just be me not um, giving it enough of a chance. Which is why I'm I'm, I'm breaking up my playtime with the ten hour trial that EA um, allowed to have, just so I can like really get a wide experience with it to try and because I'm at the moment I had fun, but I don't know if I'd buy it just yet. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, sure. like, like yeah. we've always said, we've always said with Battlefield games, when they come out, mm. they're broken. They're glitchy. They still have a lot of um, uh, graphical issues. Mm, there is. And, and other things uh, that are going on. And, and and if you look at Steam, actually, it's, I think, sixth worst rated game at the moment or something like no, that. I didn't even know that. Um, and, and it's simply, I think, one of two things. One, it's, I don't think it's as bad as people are saying. No. And they're just... Uh, some people that are, like, review bombing this are big cowboys, boys and they're just trying to make Vanguard look better than Battlefield. Uh, and the other one is, like, they were expecting this, this mm. perfect game from release and it wasn't. Because Battlefield games are never perfect. No. They always take three, four, five months after release to be patched, to be fixed, to have other features added, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, here we go. This is the shit right now. Hmm. So, yeah, because that's why my things, I'm not saying the graphic glitches or anything like that because I expected them. I'm not saying yeah. any things like that, any bugs. Because I haven't really run into that many of them, in fairness. So it is a bit better. But a few of the ones I've worked, a few of the ones I was expecting to be fixed weren't fixed. And I was like, okay, I was hoping yeah. this would be. But. It's more so like I wanted to call in a vehicle and I couldn't, so I had to run like 400 meters across an open field. Mm. And once I got there, dead. I was like, okay. <laughs> so then the next time I, I was like, okay, I'm 400 meters away from this thing. I'm going to fucking redeploy. Redeployed. My, my teammate was at the objective. I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the objective in combat and then died and I was like okay now I have to go 400 meters away again hope I can call in a car if not start hoofing ass yeah so that was maybe, that maybe was when thing. we play together mm. it won't be as bad maybe it's a thing that if you play on your own it's a bit boring in that sense because there's traveling and stuff but maybe when you're playing with someone it's not as bad maybe I don't know First off, my connection dropped a little bit there, so let's hope nothing weird happened with any of our recordings or stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, because that was really my only thing. And then, like once I got to the like the, the big fight that was happening, I was like, okay, I feel like this is Battlefield Four at the moment. And it's mm. like, okay, it, it. The other thing is like, okay, once you get to them, once you get to the big fight. A lot of times it's in a real big, wide open patch. Like yeah. one was on a giant boat and we were kind of like pushing up and pushing back. And that was fun. 
But every now and again, I was like, this is really open and it's just a flat area with a bit of cover in it. I'm like, okay, that's a map, but there's not a whole lot of dimensions to it. Because like, as you say with Shanghai, mm. there are yeah. um, there are buildings in the side. So if you step a little too far to the side, you get sniped and then all this type of stuff. There's different like elevators and shit. I kind of am just describing that, um, the map to an extent. But it's just whatever way I felt when I was playing it, I was like, okay, it's pretty flat. Now I went to another area, which is just a housing estate. Most of the buildings were destroyed. I was like, okay, this is also pretty flat. This is just <laughs> flat floodplain. Okay. Then I went to a different place. I was like, okay, buildings, a, a different map entirely. I was like, oh, I played three um, matches yesterday. No, I didn't. I left halfway through. I, I don't know. I just kind of felt a little bit lackluster with it. But again, mm. I'm going to give it more chances because as I said, yeah, my... The, my the phrase of my insa- uh, my sanity is well freighted at this point it could well have just been my mood <laughs> yesterday was not good so like it might have just been the mindset i was in for that maybe that i was like maybe this was this isn't because i'm just focusing on what the shit was happening earlier on so I was like okay so that's why i'm definitely willing to give it more a go it was still fun and again yeah. i managed to rant about a real cinematic event i had already it's my first day playing it that's something in my mind that's going no you will really enjoy this game just keep going yeah. for it yeah, and I feel like the other part of it as well is the Halo. Yes, I I, I want to leave that as far to the end so we could, I could talk about Halo for the next 20 years. Okay, we'll we get, we get there in a minute. So I, I just, I saw one thing in Battlefield, before we move on, I saw one thing in Battlefield that I thought was fucking hilarious because a lot of people were complaining about it, but everyone that has played Battlefield before was like, you clearly have never played Battlefield. Mm-hmm. If something seems like a glitch or shouldn't be working, it's not. It's most likely a feature. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, there is a hover... Yeah. Uh, hover boats that, like, if you hit them at the right angle, you can climb up buildings. Mm-hmm. Now, that shit, first of all, is fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. Second of all, they're never going to fix that because mm-hmm. that's fucking brilliant. Mm-hmm. And whatever but i saw a clip and i swear to god oh I it looked something out of a trailer yeah it looked something out of a trailer it was that first map they had for the the beta there was one climbing up up the side of the building of the big building i think it's a b or something mm-hmm. and it's cl- it's climbing up the building and the fella is shooting at the boat as it's coming to the top and just as it's reaching the top, another one arrives and they both <laughs> fly over the building and like six guys jump, no, four guys jump off each boat and just start wrecking shop. It was honestly one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It looked genuinely something out of a fucking trailer. Okay. And it just, <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Like I, That's not the one I saw. I saw another one where he drove the boat up the side of the thing and he drove up the giant building and jumped it and then hit a helicopter and blew it up like it was <laughs> a fucking die hard so like yeah i think that's not yeah that's definitely something people are like what the fuck they don't yeah. people don't really understand battlefield games are just fun like yeah they're said, not it, yeah, there's a glitch exactly. a feature yeah they're meant to be stupid massive fun like there's no yeah. like oh like we gotta we gotta win this like if you lose at the end you're like oh we lost I thought we were doing better than we were. Okay, mm. next one. Like, it's never like, oh, fuck, we we should have won that, like, and all this. It's it's really just stupid fun mm. and just chaos, I feel like. That's, that's what Battlefield... And I feel like that's what a lot of people miss from playing Battlefield and don't understand yeah. when they play Battlefield because they're so used to this competitiveness in other mm. games, such as CODs and Halos and... And all those other sh- first-person shooters that are just really, like, competitive-driven games. But Battlefield is literally, like, go in and just do whatever the fuck mm. you want and have a bit of fun. Uh, and it, I feel like some people enjoy that for a while, but then need that competitiveness. I feel like we're like that as well. Sometimes mm. we just need that competitive nature to a game. But we can also appreciate just stupid fun. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, that's that's Battlefield. It's out now. I haven't played it yet. I will be playing it probably tomorrow when I go back up to mm. Cork. But um, yeah, I want to talk about before we get to Halo. 
God, that's I like the main teased. event. I know. Uh, have you seen the the GTA trilogy and all the oh, issues yeah. it's had? Yeah. Oh boy! Like oh boy. you think for a game that old or games that old, and they're just being touched up. They should just be perfection because mm-hmm. the original ones aren't broken. Nope. It's not it like has. they're they were already been like broken or whatever. And all you did it was touch them up, and they are super oh, super God. broken. Mm-hmm. Like it's terrible, um, and they have come out in the last twenty four hours, Rockstar, and have apologized. Yeah, um, have a good for companies to do that. Yeah, it, they're like, we're, we apologize for it being so bad, and we're gonna do our best to release patches and and all this as soon as possible. Um, like th- this trilogy was breaking PCs. Like it, it mm-hmm. was PCs were struggling to run this game when it shouldn't. No. <laughs> uh, so I I think that's fucking insane. That's they they messed up this bad, which then in turn has made me kind of go. Shoot, what's gonna happen when GTA Six comes mm-hmm. out? When it's like is, yeah, like. Is that because they've said they were working on this trilogy thing for years, uh, oh and like touching it up and stuff? So like, when we get GTA Six, which apparently they've been working on for fucking the past ten years, mm-hmm. are we just gonna get a broken hot piece of shit? Probably. Or was this potentially a tester, kind of like testing the waters, kind of going like testing new features or something? with this trilogy and they're gonna fix it for the bigger game I feel like that's my optimistic side coming through I think GTA 6 if they if if they don't fix their shit it's gonna be broken and people are gonna be pissed oh fuck yeah cause they waited have, like over 7 oh no 2013 um God, it, it, it'll be it'll be like 10 years by the time it comes out if not more yeah, that's the thing. People wait eight years for any like new call, like not Call of Duty. Um, fucking GTA. People hard, hard people are hard have to wait eight months for a new Call of Duty game to come out. Um, <laughs> yeah, for a new GTA, and then they get a remastered trilogy, and it's fucked. Like it's that's fucked. not, yeah, that's not a good. Maybe that's the whole idea, though. Maybe this is this is like you had an optimistic point of view. I have a conspiracy <laughs> point of view. Of maybe it's like they released this shitty game for people to go. Oh, this is how bad this is. They should take their time with GTA Six, and they can get more time that way. Oh, I could. Yeah, I could actually. See? Oh, there we go. They knew. They knew what they were doing all along. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I still want GTA Six like tomorrow. So just give it to me. Yeah, <laughs> just give me the the raw data. You know, no yeah. render. The raw. It's but yes, cold. I, I just want to talk about that now for I'm the main the event boy. of the evening. Halo, out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. <laughs> On the 20th year anniversary of Xbox. We should Xbox? have considered yeah, this, Xbox. by the way. <laughs> it kind of just... We didn't see it coming, though. Like, no. you know, it was kind of weird. And then on the 20th year anniversary, out of nowhere, they were like, y- you want to play Halo? Well, well you can. <laughs> yeah. Every- everyone gets Halo. And then they released the, the beta... Or is it the actual... It's still the beta, okay. It's a bit confusing. It's a bit confusing because it is a beta, that's what I heard, but it's also like the actual thing. Yeah. But with limitations. Yes. Now, that's the key phrase as to why it's still a beta, as why people are still really confused, because I've seen people in the comment section be like, oh, what the hell... Um, um, People saying, "Oh no, it's, it, this is the full game. This is exactly what it's going to be like." And those people are more than willing to just say it's a shit game, but it's not. Yeah. Um, and other people are like, oh, "It's just a beta, but what's going to change?" I don't know what's actually going to change. That's my thing. Yeah, I just looked it up here. It started obviously the fifteenth, and it'll go right up to launch. So this is it. Like the the game is pretty much out. Like yeah, it, they're the not gonna. Out. Yeah, the multiplayer. They're not going to stop for a week before it comes. It's just going to go right up to it. And on the day of release, there'll probably be more features, more customization, more maps, probably more guns. 
and obviously the campaign will drop um, mm. but holy shit is this game first of all beautiful oh yeah I love it it is beautiful I haven't come across any glitches graphical issues yeah anything like that it is and, and it's just crisp it runs crisp the way oh everything is just fantastic about yeah. this like that's the thing um, the more I thought of the, of the game being a beta uh, the more and more I thought of it being hey, you know, it's just a um, this is the beta for the actual game to come out I'm like damn this is one of the smoothest running betas that I have ever fucking played in my life <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and what's annoying me is that streamers big streamers I won't name any of them but big streamers are complaining that this feels like old halos bearing in mind that when halo 5 came out yep everyone was like what the fuck is this give us the old fashioned halo and when they go back and give us the old fashioned halo you complain yeah. that it's old fashioned halo shut the fuck up you have no idea what you're on about halo is one of the greatest franchises of all time and this game has just put it right back on the fucking map and yeah. this is just the beta and it's going to be probably it could potentially be the best halo potentially i'm not saying it is i mean it's got it's got to live up to region three like you know there's that's a very big, big statement step. that i will not endorse. but it could but it could be I'm not going to indulge you know you. <laughs> not no, like okay what annoys me about what you said there about the streamer saying it is the streamers are like the big streamers are turning around and saying oh it's the old halos unless the old halo they're referring to with halo 4 they have no idea what they're talking about the weapons are different yeah. the aim down sights yeah. are much better I lo I actually love the aim down sights in this if you put it to classic also other thing the default settings on the controller is not the old halo style things like your aim down sights is still left trigger isn't it yeah, it's like and default, like, call, like every other yeah. person, On, yeah. So they had to have then gone into, the, into their control settings and they themselves switched to Changed classic, it. like I did, <laughs> to make it feel like the older Halo and then complain about it feeling like an older Halo, even yes. though older Halos prior to f uh, 4 and to an extent Reach, but even Reach had Sprint as, a, as an armor ability, old Halos didn't have Sprint. Old Halo, you weren't able to slide. There was no grapple. There was no um, mantle. Well, that's the word, not grapple. Yeah. There was none of that. So I don't know what they're fucking talking about because if we, no. it, I, I will admit, there is a lot more emphasis on walking around and hip firing your weapons uh, rather than aiming. Because Halo Five definitely felt like you should be aiming down sides a lot more. Yeah. Um. There, like, there is definitely a nice balance of old style feel of mechanics and um just old halo feel it definitely feels mm. like an old halo but there's so many new mechanics like the sprint feels so smooth and welcomed in it the fact that you can pick up yeah. a power like not none of the things i've seen so far i've been like what the fuck like i yeah. know, pick up a fusion call and throw it feels natural being able to like pull yourself up on something that feels natural sprinting mm. natural sliding natural i know the spartans weigh like one ton but if they if you are able to move <laughs> something one ton you can slide that one ton thing you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah the one yeah. thing i will say i still don't knock me so on is the grapple shot because holy hell like, again yeah, it, you weighed one to two tons but yeah. still it feels natural <laughs> It does, yeah, uh, and and every new feature that they've added just feels like you said natural, and it, mm. it feels like it belongs. There, there hasn't been anything that I've used or or seen that go, and ah, now that's yeah. a bit that's a bit much. And in fairness, weapon balancing is pretty yeah. much spot on. There's only like the hammer. Oh god, uh, the, the gravity hammer is overpowered in any Halo game, but this one is over the top. It's broken because it, there's literally no range. It's literally like if you're within, if if you're within somewhere, I'll get you. Uh, so that'll probably be nerfed a little bit, and maybe one of the other rifles and stuff, maybe, maybe. a little bit. But 
like it's pretty balanced yeah uh, all together and i quite like and uh, now i don't know if release is gonna be like that but i quite like the fact that everyone has the same guns at the mm. beginning that's like that's uh, every halo has been like that yeah uh, and and i like that because everyone is kind of the same then there is no mm. like bullshitting of using uh a broken gun <coughs> vanguard um mm-hmm. that uh, you just have to fucking be level 20 to get this gun yeah. you level that up and then you just go on wreck shop um yeah. there's nothing like that everyone's the same if you come across a gun on the floor one of the spawn ones you pick it up you go do bits until you die or it runs out of ammo and you move on and you go back to you're back to where everyone else was and it yeah. just feels fair it doesn't yeah. feel like you're being stomped on doesn't feel anything like that it's just fair all the way through and that's the thing if you do feel like you're being stomped on you're playing against a guy who's really good like that was the exact what most things you're saying last night or right now is what I was thinking of last night when I was using they have a new weapon the commando which I said was overpowered but then the more I used it I was like no it's not overpowered there is like it has limitations it's good at a range mm. but once you're up close that thing has uh, accuracy issues out the wazoo like so it is really balanced and it's something that yeah. I, I, I notice all the time once you get down to like okay if you're new to Halo and you're you come from COD to Halo the shields are gonna fuck you up like you're not gonna yeah. like you'll be able to understand what like okay maybe with the um, the armor plates in the um, in Warzone, in Warzone. might maybe. be a bit of a buffer yeah. but the fact that they recharge but like it's it's as an old Halo player as someone who's been playing Halo multiplayer since um, I was seven when I was fucking Halo three, or else I was nine. So I was nine. So even back then, I know to shoot them until the shields are down almost all the way, and then punch them in the fucking face to kill them. <laughs> People yeah. don't know that, and I love it because every now and again I come up against a new guy and he's shooting me, and I'm like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. I know I am, and you're not gonna be able to do anything about it. And but then yeah. I see other people as well on my team who are like trying to shoot, but then they break the shields and then they go to reload. I'm like, switch weapons and shoot the fucker in the head. So yeah, yeah. Once you get down into the swing of Halo, once you figure out its mechanics, its abilities, and everything about it, it's it's honestly one of the most more fair games out there when it comes to it weapon is. balancing and shield balancing. Yeah, like obviously there's gonna be people that are absolutely filthy at Halo. Oh yeah, there always is people that are just fucking filthy at it. Um, but especially in in those are game modes that what what are they called the uh, like the SWAT. headshot one. Um, what SWAT? SWAT. Yeah, you yeah. Speak grandmaster on it. <laughs> yeah, so like people in SWAT are disgusting. Mm. Uh, those those lads are filthy in that game mode. But in a normal game mode, just whatever, like oddball or or mm. or domination it really is super fair that like yeah. it's really hard to be just super dominant SWAT is different because people are just fucking lock onto your head and you're dead instantly so that's different but in normal game mode like it's it's really really fair yeah I, I don't have any issues with it at the moment like I haven't got into something like oh this guy just constantly using this weapon if a guy is constantly using a weapon he knows where it is yeah, yeah he just knows when to get it like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so this, this, this game is, is beautiful yeah and, and and we're back to the whole thing with people complaining about like controllers have aim assist yes do they? they do I mean they do but, but they, in this. It's, they do a little bit uh, very slightly uh, but guess what it's a lot harder to aim with a fucking stick than a mouse um, so we need that slight help because first of all if anyone's been cunt with okay that might be a bit strong word there actually I'll say uh, <laughs> if that if people are being dickheads with with uh, just being nasty at games is PC players remember COD at uh, Warzone when we used to play it every time we come up against uh, a PC player it'd just be like no recoil and then just ping me from wherever they could no one could do that on console so that that little bit of of help with the aim assist that kind of sticks onto the person for a, a, a half a second extra it is just a bit of extra help and mm. people complain like it's like the end of the world and like we're, we're getting this super advantage no, <laughs> no you're not it's just that little bit of extra help to make it fair 
Yeah. Against That's PC players. That's why console and PC players are being separated and ranked. Fuck yourselves. They even listen to you. Yeah, exactly. For ranked, it's separated because it's unfair for for either side. Yeah, um, so they even, like, even listen to you. So fuck yeah, you. So stop complaining. Uh, I I can't wait to get into that proper like ranked and everything. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to ranked as well. I know it's available at the moment. Um, give it a go at some point. There's also achievements for it too. So um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 yeah. I feel like I feel like Splitgate was a good like kind of like getting into it um, mm. that type of game uh, this is going to kill Splitgate by the way oh, yeah. I feel <laughs> it's going to fucking destroy because why would you play Splitgate when you play the original <laughs> uh, yeah so, it's true though it, it's, it's it just is, Halo Portals yeah. exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm so happy this game is back I'm such a, I, as, as I've shown a few times in this podcast I'm such a fucking Halo fanboy yeah I will, I will say it proudly as well <laughs> and I hope I hope the campaign is really really good oh same I'm like as a Halo fanboy who loves all the old Halo games I'm looking forward to like an over like an open worldish type of exploratory yeah, yeah, more yeah. sense because like I admit like even the older Halo games there's always been an element of it that's just been kind of well hidden like if you look at Combat Evolved you remember that first the oh the I second remember. mission where we had to find all the fucking guys we roamed that place for like an hour trying to find yeah. which one we missed I know like yeah you know? so so just having that bit of open world esque feel to it will be different or mm. or more more like 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 combat evolved is pretty much not open world but it's pretty open yeah you can uh, do things a few ways yeah so but this one is, is more leaning towards mm. the open world so it'd be interesting how they do it i hope it's kind of like you're dropped into a map and it's kind of like go you know kind of yeah. like you have to do this but there might be things hitting around the place or side kind of missions and stuff like that because mm. that uh, would make more sense for this story because if you look at combat evolved even for combat evolved actually the fact that it's a little bit more open is grand but you land on this random ring that you have no idea about and then you start discovering, like, but like you have other people like helping you out, like you have. Yeah. I think it's the pillar of autumn is still around, and like blah, 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 let's go all around the place. That's grand, but um, in Halo Two, you're fo- you're being led along different missions by the UNSC, and Halo Three, it's similar as well. You're being led along these missions, um, say four and five, blah, blah, blah. But with this one, you literally with one other guy, you hit a random ring. And you discover that there's a bunch of things on it. <laughs> like, that makes much more sense to me to be yeah. open world than a linear game. Yeah, exactly. God, I'm so. I can't wait for May 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Why May 2022? Because that's when we get the campaign in Forge. Ah. Uh, yeah. I thought it was his release date. Uh, yeah. Release for. Um, release is December 8th for the full, like, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, the full. Multiplayer. Thing. Sadly, a little wait a little long for the campaign, but look, I have the, the multiplayer. I have traditional multiplayer to keep myself delighted with over Christmas, and when I have another mental breakdown, which I have to do coding later on for my uh, fucking lit review or whatever the fuck. So yeah, Halo, <laughs> good to see it back on top. Wait, I think I think that I think the campaign comes out straight away. No. What comes out in May is co-op campaign. Oh, might have misread it. I think what comes out in May is co-op campaign and Forge. I feel like I think the the main campaign. Oh, is, that's why. <laughs> I f- I think the main campaign is, comes out on the day. Oh fuck it, never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's co-op campaign comes out in May, and that just means Forge. you're safe it's from playing two. legendary on this until then. Play <laughs> yeah, play that. Enjoy on heroic or something. Yeah, um, do do something else before I drag you through it. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's my yeah, question I, then. Do I well, do legendary straight off the bat, or do I do fucking? Oh, I th- I know. I feel like you should do heroic first, enjoy it, and then put yourself through a bit of the pain. Okay. Yeah. Or in, I do heroic, enjoy then it. wait till May, and then we do it together. First it, things that's on it. both. And we and we, hey, we do we like to play. Oh, then we will. 
Yeah, so... Yeah, so, no, yeah. You had me confused there for a second, but... Uh, mm. Yeah, I think that's all for games. Yes. So, m- movies? Yeah. Movies. No. Yeah. Do you Watch have anything? Out. Fuck. I, well, I have the main, I have the main, like thing that came out this week the Let's one the main everyone's thing. talking about yeah might as well go for it okay so might as well go for it oh we all know what what's talking about it's fucking everywhere it's spider-man yeah, yeah. The, the the new the new trailer came out for spider-man uh holy shit have i never seen a fucking trailer blow up oh, yeah. as much as this trailer did and not because the trailer is a good, great trailer. It was an all right trailer. It was the little details in it that are making people just dismantle this trailer frame by frame is quite unbelievable. Mm. Um, and obviously, everyone is anticipating the two Spider-Men to be in it. Toby and Andrew to also be in it. A part of me is like, they, they have to be in it at this stage. Because there, there's just so many things pointing towards the fact that they're in it. But then that's also kind of making me go, that's also why they won't be in it. That's uh, mentioned the biggest indication that they might be in it. That, that little extra frame. That little extra oh, so in, frame. In the, in the Brazilian trailer, it wasn't even the main trailer. In the Brazilian trailer, they left an extra literally like an extra two seconds of a scene where it shows lizard getting hit in the in the face by absolutely nothing the man gets clotheslined by nothing um so it's like something was edited out that is currently hitting him in the face Mm. Uh, and then there's like another scene where it shows spider-man but his eyes are like bigger they're like toby Maguire size eyes not Tom's eyes and it's kind of like it could be and like and 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 the other thing is the leaks we got maybe like a month or two ago that looked photoshopped of them in areas with scaffolding and stuff like that it yeah at that stage it did kind of look a little photoshopped but it could have been true but then in the trailer we get the final fight is in a place with a bunch of scaffolding this and is the ha- thing that makes you sound uh, like such a big conspiracy theorist every time you talk about <laughs> in the group chat and I love it. Keep going. Like in in the, the 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 leaks we have all this scaffolding and now we also have now confirmation that the final fight isn't with scaffolding and we can see the same scenes and everything and it's kinda like is it gonna happen? Like is this is this actually gonna be it? And the final thing why I think they will be in it is mm. Why would they recast every single character uh, like Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Electro, Sandman, all of them being the same people that have played them before if you're not going to bring the other two back? Because yeah. if you want to do Doc Ock, do Doc Ock, use a, different, use a different actor. Electro, use a different actor. That way, people won't be like, oh, these lads are coming in. It'll just be like, oh, they're just doing their own version of Doc Ock. But, but by bringing back the original characters, uh, the original actors, it's just putting that seed in people's mind that they're going to be in it. And I feel like if they're not in it at this stage, people are going to be super, super fucking pissed. Because everyone's just waiting for it. And like, what, yeah. two days ago, Toby was some uh, not Toby, uh, Andrew Garfield was somewhere, and they were like, are you going to be in the movie? And he kind of like smiles and gives a little nod. So then people are like losing their minds. And like Jamie Foxx to like put a post on Instagram with a bunch of lightning. He had a caption. I can't remember the caption. And then he goes hashtag fighting the spiders. And people are like oh he said spiders not spider. And it's like people have just really like dig deep into this. See, and I'm up to the thought process of they're not in it. So if they're not in it, I'm not disappointed. And if they are in it, I'm <laughs> over the moon. But I'm, yeah. You know. Yeah. And they invited a bunch of, like, in, like, yeah, I would say influencers. Uh, like, especially TikTok influencers that talk about 
uh, media and stuff to the original uh, to the premiere of the trailer and every single one of them have has made about 20 different videos since that day about how the other two spider-men are going to be in it and i'm just like why would marvel invite all these people and then let them continue to like influence everyone to believe they're going to be in it if they're not they could have easily been like turn off all the cameras blah blah, blah. look go home make all the videos you want but don't they're not gonna be in it we're telling you now they're not gonna be in it stop fucking telling people they're gonna be in it but they didn't and they just came home made 20 videos about how they're actually going to be in it and this that and the other so i feel like they they have to be in it otherwise everyone's gonna fucking riot Unless this is one of the biggest psych- psychological experiments this oh. or this world will ever see. If they're not in it, they're going to make so much money because everyone's going to be like, go see it to see if they're in it. And even yeah. if people come out and be like, look, they're not in it, don't go see it. I'm going to be like, if they're let's in. say, if you went, watched it tomorrow, came back and said, look, they're not in it, don't go watch it. You'd just be disappointed. I'm going to be like, you're lying to me. And I'll go watch it anyway. That's more of an indication <laughs> of you and me than that though. No, but I think that that's anyone. If anyone told me they're not in, I'd be like, you're lying. I'm going to go watch it. Um, and the funny thing is, as well, is Venom released, like, two days before, in, in like, America, before everywhere else. And all the Americans spoiled Venom and the ending of Venom and the after credit scene of Venom within those two days for everyone in the world. But the fucking Spider-Man movie comes two days out, two days before here and in the UK before everywhere else in the world. And I love seeing every comment section and every TikTok, just people going, uh, all the English people just going, I cannot wait to, to spoil this film for all the Americans after they spoil Venom. <laughs> and so that's why I need to go watch it the day of, because yeah. anything after like two, three hours after the film has been released, it's going to be flooded with spoilers especially if they're in it there's gonna be like people taking pictures in the cinema and just uploading them and stuff so i need to see the asap to avoid as what, many spoilers when is as it I coming can. out again because i keep i never it's the 15th of december here oh fuck i have an exam that day <laughs> i have an exam the next day so i do not oh. give a fuck i'll watch it and then go back over and watch that do my test um Oh wait, boy. wait! No, that's better for me. Yeah, because you can get the test on. And I go can do the test it. and go after. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I have to go watch and then study. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, I just, I, I can't wait for it. I really hope they're in it, because a part of me is gonna be so disappointed if they're not. Yeah. Uh, because someone like with the whole like lizard being hit. Uh, like in this trailer, Daka kind of looks like he's going to be a good guy. Hmm. So people are like, it's just Daka kid lizard. And I'm like, you, uh, why would you ruin that for me? Ah, <laughs> there it is, the counter. There it is, the counter. And I was like, I didn't see, and then someone put the Daka fighting lizard and the Green Goblin fighting Electro. And it's like, that would make a lot of sense, but please no. <laughs> Yeah, because Doc Ock does... Get, even in comics, is a bit here and there. He's a bit between yeah. being a good and bad. And Electro, like, didn't read... Like, okay. Did he... Like, he wasn't completely like, I want to kill you, Spider-Man. He was like, get out of here, Spider-Man type of thing. And gave him a chance or yeah. some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh. Oh, it would be really <laughs> so, funny like, if that's actually so what it is. But, it's probably going to be like that. But they also, like, teased that the whole thing of, like, MJ falling the same way Gwen fell. And it's kind of like, it's too much, like, they're, they're doing too much, like. I don't know. I don't know. But, like, it, it could also be a thing that they're actually not in it, but they might have, like, Miles Morales in it. Uh, like, a live-action Miles Morales in it. Or they might have a Gwen Stacy in it. Um Gwen Stacy Spider Man, uh, that is. Um, they might Spider-Man. have that Spider-Man. rather, th- yeah. They might have that rather than having the other two Spider Men. But people will be super pissed if they have two random fucking Spider Men and not the D boys. I think like, people would be more pissed at that. Yes, definitely, definitely. 
Uh, and people are like, oh, they're only in it for like 15 minutes and we piss. If they're going to be in it, they're going to be in it at the end and that's it. And yeah. I'll fucking take that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what people are expecting. They want the entire movie, but that's not how it works. Yeah, they just swing in straight away. It's like, hi, I'm Toby. You know, and all yes. this. You know, um, it wasn't worth that way. Yeah, so we just, we, we have to wait. But th- I just, I was just amazed at the way people dismantled this trailer frame for frame. Everything was just picked beyond belief it was honestly quite impressive because it, all it took was like two hours and everything was like exploded it was quite impressive yeah but uh yeah well, what other movie stuff do we have god we spoke about that for a fucking while um uh, it was the main event in fairness yeah i don't really know. is there really anything there's one other thing i want to talk about before i um, but I want to link that into everything else. I guess like um, Ghostbusters came out, did it? I I think it did, but I wasn't really sure. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it came out. Uh, I I think I did see that it might have come out, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks. In fairness, I gotta be honest, it does actually look pretty good. It is out, and it, it, it I watched the trailer again, and I did watch a bit more on it, and it does kind of look a bit a bit good because it, uh, better, it yeah. does it's kind of like a I actually didn't know it but because I I refused to watch the trailer for so long till I eventually had to see it in the cinema um, I didn't know it was kind of like a continuation yeah. of the original ones but like in the future it's like his one the main kid I, can't, I don't know his name um, his granddad was like one of the original Ghostbusters uh, yeah. and like they have the car and they have all this and that and like Paul Rudd seems awesome in it oh, so yeah. I, and it's gotten decent quite decent reviews mm. and stuff so I I would quite enjoy I'd probably I'd, I'd probably enjoy watching this I think yeah no, I think it'd be pretty good yeah okay I just wanted to mention that because it is again that's the reaction people were given I was like that's um, kind of inspiring to see uh, I am going to now go on to video games, which is like just the main thing of this entire episode uh, <laughs> of video game movies. <laughs> so, <Hey. laughs> yeah, we've had video game series, now video game movies. Um, so, we've got some early reactions to Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Now, okay. first off, the Uncharted movie isn't out, right? That's fine. I have no idea when it is because we had I got a trailer for that ages ago. No idea what it is. Um, but so this came out. I'm pretty sure February, some people were talking February. about February. Okay, so this came out, and I think it definitely came out because I hear this, I'm looking at like Twitter people saying and we went to the theater. But the only thing that I'm seeing is, as a fan, I enjoyed this, and there's so much references to the games, and I'm like. So as a movie, it's like right. <laughs> cool, yeah. but it's just a fanboy type of wet dream, pretty much. Fan pleaser kind of, I think. Yeah, which will definitely mm. restrict the quality of the movie itself. It's kind of what I see as well, people saying it's too obsessed with the games. And it's really obvious as well, because like, I see the house from the first uh, the first yeah. Resident Evil I'm like okay but then I see like fucking Claire Redfield who's in the second one yeah, yeah. who's in the second one and I'm like okay no and that's coming from someone that says the, 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 those films are his guilty pleasure <laughs> yeah the, 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 the Paul Douglas Anderson ones are the genuine thing <laughs> so I've seen the sixth one fucking need to no fifth one fucking need to but yeah they are wholeheartedly my guilty pleasure <laughs> I will gladly say that any day of the week it really is so but that's the thing they don't actually do a whole lot with the movie or with the games themselves they make references there's obviously the main plot line to it and blah 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 and the characters aren't there but it's just like it's in completely separate settings so yeah the fact is this isn't in the setting of the first game and um I, 
yeah, like one of the characters that are like I, are in it are like there's so much video game stuff. There's so yeah. much condensed in this little package that it's like there's too much. It's way too focused on like here's a reference, here's a reference, here's a reference, here's a reference. You know this thing, don't you? Yeah, here's a reference. So it's like that. That's what I'm afraid of with the Uncharted movie, and why I think people are are even like even. Tom Holland is already distancing himself from that movie, saying how like it broke him and stuff like that, and how he yeah. wasn't happy with his performance. He's already distancing himself from that, so he had a three day break from filming, finishing Far From Home, and going straight into Uncharted. He had a three yeah. day break. That's insane. Yeah. So like, am I happy to see Resident Evil? <laughs> kind of, um, you know. Um, given his treatment of this fanboy niche yeah I am but I I don't want other movies to follow suit I don't want again yeah. the Halo series to follow suit I don't want well maybe again don't know how this podcast could be laid out uh, I don't want the Halo series to, to play it like that I don't want the show down like, I, that can't in fairness that video game series can't um, follow like this but like I just don't want other ones that come into into the future to follow this pattern of show as many video game things as you can to make people go oh cool and then that's it yeah yeah so yeah because that that's that's really what video games are video game movies are it's kind of like they can either go really original and people hate that or they go like super like here's everything about the game and that's it and people are like well that was just the game I could have just played the game and mm. that's why making video games movies and TV shows just generally doesn't work because mm. people just keep comparing it to the game rightfully so and it's kind of like if you go too much like the game they don't like that and if you go too far away from the game it's like we don't like that Yeah. so it's kind of like there's no way of pleasing anyone um, it's kind of like like book series as well with like let's say like Harry Potter a lot of people obviously love Harry Potter like it's mm. one of the best franchises of oh all time oh my fucking god you just reminded me that they are regrouping for a 20th anniversary thing yeah we, we, we can get there that was a good transition but okay uh, <laughs> uh, and like people were like oh yeah the movies are good but like the books are better because like they they left this this yeah but like just love the movies for what they are and love the books for what they are but I feel like with games it's just a little harder because I we've had this discussion before yeah. you can visualize a game I mean you can mm -hmm. visual you can see a game you can't see a book yeah um, but yeah so the 20th 20th year anniversary 20, it's just crazy yeah that, that came out 20 years ago the Philosopher's Stone or in other parts of the world I think it's called the Sorcerer's Stone I think it's just uh, in America yeah because Philosopher's Stone is too hard um, but, well, I mean, no, but the thing that annoys me so much about that is the Philosopher's Stone is a genuine like mythological item yeah that happens to be called the Sorcerer's Stone as well but in nearly every walks of life it is called like I don't know if Full Metal Alchemist over in America they call it Sorcerer's Stone there because they make reference to it being called a Sorcerer's Stone in like the anime, in the yeah in the dubbed version so I don't know in America did they just make a completely new one just to be fucking weird <laughs> uh, but that came out 20 years ago and they're having a reunion uh, of the whole cast and this has gotten mixed reviews right yeah I can see why the uh like a lot of people are really happy to see them all come together because we haven't really seen them work together or anything like that since like the, the last movie um but then people were like oh, you can't be keep putting money into that jk rowling one and it's like you do know she's gonna have no part in this they actually yeah. had to come out and say jk rowling won't be at the reunion so people would stop complaining and it's kind of like, why, okay, I understand why you're complaining. I understand, like, Jacob Rowling kind of went off the fucking handlebars. Um, but it's also like, just enjoy 
the reunion enjoy the the like it's been 20 years enjoy that aspect of it don't be focusing on on someone that wrote the books and has not pretty much nothing to do with the movies like yeah you're complaining about an aspect of it that completely has nothing to do with it also you were not that far off when you said the phrase philosopher is too difficult for Americans <laughs> because the actual reason and I shit you not I looked it up literally says the publishers thought that American readers wouldn't pick up a book called Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone yeah. because they would associate the word philosopher with hang on, they would associate they with alchemist or magic or if the word philosopher oh so no. so they they weren't gonna pick it up they weren't gonna pick up a book about a magic kid because the word was gonna remind them about magic so we changed it up so that they don't think of magic so they can read a magic book we we'll changed the sorcerer which has more to do which with magic than more philosophy. to magic yeah like if you tell me a sorcerer i feel i think of two things a wizard or the the sorcerer stone which is the fucking movie <laughs> yeah, uh, but the whole point of philosophy was that it, oh fuck it no we're gonna go too into it. no yeah i am actually one of the people who's kind of excited for it i'd say i'm just looking excited to see how they reminisce about it and see what's going yeah. on like that yeah i'm looking forward because to they're that gonna period. go back to the set they're gonna yeah or they're gonna go back to hogwarts that's what they said so that's gonna be really really cool uh, it's gonna. It's. Uh, I feel like it's kind of gonna be a little bit like the Friends reunion, that mm. it was kind of like it was cute. They all came together and they reminisced. They reminisced about like, uh, behind the scenes and and extra mm. little things like that. It'll just be really really cute to to see. Like I always love seeing that scene where Ron kisses the the girl, I, his girlfriend in it. I I can't Why? remember her name. No 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 the other one. Oh, <laughs> I can't remember her name. Oh, lavender. It could be, but oh, when they're oh, kissing, uh, <laughs> when they kiss, I just love seeing that because uh, Daniel Radcliffe was on set and he kept cut. He kept shouting out "cut" in the middle of the kiss so that they would have to kiss oh, again, and they that. he did it like twenty times. And then when Hermione and Ron were gonna kiss. And they were like, oh, we're, we're going to, like, film the kiss, like, tomorrow or something. They Both of them simultaneously turned around and looked at Daniel Radcliffe and said, you can't be there. And he was like, what? Why can't I be there? And to this day, he's like, I I wanted to be there when they were filming it, but he mm-hmm. couldn't be because he just kept, he would have kept going out. So their chemistry throughout the whole time was so, so good. It was lavender. Fuck <laughs> bad boy here. So the, the whole way through, the chemistry was still there. So I kind of want to see, is kind of like the chemistry, the love, all that still there for each other. Uh, mm. So I feel like that's going to be really, really cute. Oh, also, yeah. those Thank movies were our childhood. And mm-hmm. the fact that they were kind of 20 years ago is just insane. I still cried the last one. Yeah. Oh, boy. I want to watch them all again now. <laughs> that's your Halloween. Oh, that's your Christmas tradition, though, isn't it? No, it's watching a uh, movie series. I think this year it's Indiana Jones. I thought you were going to say The Dark Knight. I thought you said that last time. We not really sure. No, Dark Knight's definitely one on our list, but Indiana Jones is probably our one this year because I. It's been years since I've seen those movies again, and I fucking love them. Yeah. All of them. All of them. Sadly. <laughs> I know. I don't love the fourth one just because it's a bit wacky, but the first three are absolute masterpieces. Oh yeah, yeah. I I love the the whole thing of like in the first one, uh, that like yeah, that, the whole like up. massive plot hole in, in it. It's, I just fucking love that. Like he yeah. he is pointless to the story. It's fucking yep. brilliant. The uh, the exact I think wording of it is the story wouldn't change if he wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, and people are like no 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 because. The Nazis wouldn't have got it because uh, the Nazis were digging in the wrong hole, uh, so they never would have found it. It's like yes, but they were digging in the wrong hole because Indiana Jones stole something. So if mm. he didn't steal that, they would have been digging in the right hole in the first place anyway. So, um, yeah. I find that really really funny. Uh, yeah. Was that like, like how how did that like, like just go over someone's head like? 
it's just uh, writing. It's it's not yeah. really a, going over some of like it's just like it's still a good movie. It's like it's oh yeah, it's, it's just it's just a funny ever. aspect of the entire thing that even though it's <laughs> like a story doesn't necessarily have to have its character be the main driving force of it. The character like the character is just there to witness the story. True. True. Uh, that's true. Uh, but yeah, that that is one of like it's one of the best franchises. But it's also that first film. It's probably the best one. I have a personal love for the third one. I uh, know. Uh, I have a personal love for the second one because I think it's so underrated. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, like it's impossible. Like I love all. Like, yeah, the first and, and they're 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 films. they're one of the best films of all time. Anyway, that that's what yeah. I was getting at. It, it's definitely up there, uh, with with all time greats, um, and what uh, Harrison Ford is just fantastic in it. He's just. <laughs> He's just the guy in it, you know. But that's that's it. We're running out of time here. Yep. Run that outro. So make sure to follow us on Instagram where we post movie reviews at the Screen Age Podcast. We also have a TikTok. Uh, so that is also at the Screen Age. Uh, so go watch those TikToks. And on YouTube, we post Let's Plays every Saturday. And we're currently playing through the drug become human, so go see our experience through that, and that's it. Bye bye.